Hey everybody, welcome back to the Gamers Vault, and I'm your host, James. Uh, first, I want to go ahead and say thank you for those who uh, attended my live stream over the weekend, watched me play some SNES Classic, and, you know, going through back and forth. Uh, it was great, and I got to talk to a lot of you guys, so that was wonderful. I did promise you, uh, before the weekend comes out, that I would be doing a special video to... Uh, one, to commemorate pretty much Halloween. I want Everyone does on YouTube a Halloween video. And this one would be kind of Halloween-ish. It's more of a documentary. And uh, it's going to be a little longer than normal for me. Only because uh, I owe you guys a video. It's been a while. And I want to make sure, uh, for those who have been watching, that I give you guys something back. And I, I know you guys would appreciate it. Those of you guys who are history buffs and gaming buffs, retro gaming buffs, stick around. Because you're going to love it. Um, the next weekend, uh, Saturday, I'm contemplating a couple of things. Because I'm getting ready for BlizzCon, guys. I'm flying out on uh, November 1st. So the, literally the night before Halloween, I have to actually get some sleep. Get up early in the morning. My flight leaves at 5.40 in the morning out of, out of New York. So it's going to be a long day for me. Um... So it's going to be hard for me to make another video at this time. I do have some mods in the pipeline. So stick around to my channel because you're going to love these mods that are coming up. We're going to customize some stuff. And I want you guys to check it out. Um, what are we talking about today? Well, in the 90s, uh, I, or 80s, I was born in the 80s. I was, I was born in 1982. So growing up, I never had a chance to go Halloween or trick-or-treating. My father and my mom, um, we all lived in the city. And at that time, they kind of didn't want us to go door-to-door -to, -door to do trick-or-treating. But don't get me wrong, we did have costumes, my brother and I. And we went to school and did it there and then came back home, stuff like that. They did buy us some candy and we got to watch horror films. Uh, gaming was unique for us. So I had a Nintendo growing up. If you guys haven't figured it out yet... I was I was a Nintendo child. I didn't have money to have... At least my parents didn't have money to have both consoles. So we chose Nintendo because of Nintendo's family-friendly orientation at that time. They're still family-friendly today, but little by little, we've been seeing some peculiar things at Nintendo. Yeah. Kind of like that. And this is for the Switch. Really? Anyway... <laughs> We're going to talk about that. But when we grew up as a kid, there were two factions. There was either Sega or Nintendo. So when I was sitting down watching cartoons with my brother, this would come on. 16-bit arcade graphics. You can't do this on Nintendo. Genesis does. 16-bit sports action. You can't do this on Nintendo. Genesis does. Joe Montana free, Pat Riley free, Buster Douglas free, Super Monaco GP free, or Columns Genesis free. Does. What Nintendo? Buy a 16-bit Genesis system between now and October 31st and get an extra game. <laughs> so, you guys understand, Genesis does what Nintendo don't. That got them to a lot of trouble. Um, Nintendo wasn't really vocal in, uh, say, commercials, but they didn't like the fact that Sega was climbing in the market share. And it's all thanks to this man, or no, this man right here. Uh, Tom Kalinske, he brought the company uh, a lot pieces in the market share and, uh, you know, a big chunk of it, obviously, in their market share, uh, almost like 49 or 50 percent. And Nintendo didn't like that so much. But Sega was giving people what Nintendo didn't. So that commercial was almost true at that point. What am I talking about? We today buy games. We all do. And at the bottom of each game, we see ratings like that. These are called the ESRB ratings. And these ratings are there for a reason. The reason why they're there is so that way you as a parent, or at least the parents at that time, can decide on what to give to their children. Let's face facts. It's in 2000s, and a lot of parents give a lot of crap to their kids. I've seen like a 9-year-old or 10-year-old get Grand Theft Auto, and Fortnite is just ridiculous. But, you know, Fortnite being the way it is, 
it, it's more a child approach friendly. But back then, it'd be ridiculous. What am I talking about? How did the ESRB get to become its, come into fruition? I'm going to talk about it today. And then I'm going to do an opening. So I got two things to show you guys today. The most controversial games that were happening was uh, were happening around the I think 1992, um, where the congressional hearings came out. And now congressional hearings pretty much said, "Listen, Sega, Nintendo, you guys need to get together because you're getting a little crazy with your games." There was no rating at that time, so a lot of things were coming out. The main games that had a problem were like focusing on what's one of the games I hmm I want to give you a couple of them but one of them was Mortal Kombat you can understand why Sega kept blood in uh, Nintendo uh, Super Nintendo if you saw they changed the blood to sweat so every time you hit something it would be sweat and they took out the violent finish them some finisher moves whereas Sega kept it all in they kept it as a complete arcade port as well as Street Fighter Street Fighter was a little bit more into that too but not really you know um, so what happened uh, the congressional hearings got together a senator came together and put it all together and he said listen you need to regulate yourselves or we're gonna come in and do it for you <laughs> so Instead of me talking on and on about it, let's take a look at some of the excerpts of that of those hearings and see what comes out about it. <clears throat> I'd like to ask uh, both Mr. Lincoln and Mr. White the following question. As you move and expand your business and uh, move into the adult market and uh, create product for the adult market only and sell it in your stores, adults come to buy it, do you have any way of guaranteeing the American people that their children aren't going to see it? No. Mr. White? No, we don't, Senator. All we can do is work with the mechanisms that are uh, available to us, and that's what we want to do through this industry-wide coalition. And that's why we're so pleased to see the VSDA here. So that, so that there's, no, there's no way in which we can feel comfortable that the kind of material that some of us might think doesn't belong in the market at all isn't, in fact, going to get on the market and then be viewed by... By children. Well, it, Senator that, Cole, it's, right? it's similar to the motion picture. Yes, answer. it is. Yes, it is. I, and, I, and I understand. I understand what you're saying. Yes. I just want to clarify so everybody understands where this all leads. There's an interesting difference between Sega and Nintendo in this matter, in that we have moved ahead with CD technology using a CD-ROM player as an interactive entertainment device. We have Sega CD on the market. We've had it in the market since November of 1992. Nintendo it does not have a CD-ROM device. They continue to focus their marketing efforts against children. We have recognized that the interactive entertainment market is far larger than just a children's market. The demographics of our Sega CD player, which are 60% adults, suggests that that is the fact. And we would like to see a rating system that will allow us to develop games for that broad array of players but give the consumer the information necessary to make an appropriate decision for his or her family. All right. Do you want to say a bit something, Mr. Lincoln? Well, I, I didn't realize that the hearing was uh, focused on market share. I thought we were talking about regulation of violence, but my, uh, my colleague must think differently. Let me say this. The, the biggest problem we have here is... In, in a rating system is try to figure out some way of enforcing it. And, and, and you, uh, Senator Cole, as a, a former retailer, uh, I think understand that as, as well as I do, being a businessman. If we simply put these ratings, this game is violent, on this packaging, however we do it, and we don't have the cooperation of retailers, if we don't have some enforcement mechanism, my own personal view is that that really may be a step backward, and we may really only be encouraging people to make more violent games. Certainly, the industry is moving into different uh, territory with new technology. Uh, Nintendo, for example, is going to be coming out with a 64-bit system in the future, but the, the point of that is that graphics uh, are going to become uh, much better, uh, and 
My sense is that unless we can get everybody in this business, not just the video game companies, but the retailers and the government involved in putting a stop to the kind of things that you're seeing in Night Trap, we're really deceiving ourselves that we're going to keep this, this kind of violence out of the hands of children. Aye. As you can see, Sega tried to defend themselves, explaining about the market share at the time. And then, you know, Howard came back with something totally different. Howard Lincoln, by the way, guys, was the senior vice president of Nintendo at the time. So he was vice president. Before, he started out as a lawyer and helped Nintendo with other things. But I'm not going to get into that today. It's too long and too complicated for, for Howard's, Howard's uh, past. I will tell you, Howard did uh, became president of the Mariners baseball game, baseball team, which was owned by Nintendo. And then recently, from what I understood... Uh, when I was researching this video, he has stepped down and retired. Long deserved retirement, but it retired. So, as you can see, they were explaining market share and as far as the demographics concern. Howard had some points, you know, uh, at the time that people weren't ready for the Sega CD. They weren't ready for all this stuff. And... Let's put it this way, guys. I cut the hearings down a little bit shorter, but they had so it was like a two hour hearing about this. And the ESRB was born from this. So it's really important. But what got them so upset and so uptight that made them go, What the hell is going on? Let's check it out. <laughs> Megan, this isn't going to work. You're not scaring me. Wait. What are you doing? No! No! As you can see, guys, this is what they considered violence back then. And for the for the time, I can understand, you know? But nowadays, we can watch, like, Resident Evil and, you know, uh, Red Dead Redemption's coming out. That's another one. There's several games that have so much violence. And it's sad, you know? Um, the, Sega, the Sega CD itself really was instrumental in, in growing up as a child. I mean, I couldn't afford it. I mean, today I can afford it, but to be honest with you, it's very rare. A lot of games cost a lot of money. But the people who made uh, Night Trap, Digital Pictures, they made other games as well. I mean, of course you know Corpse Killer. They made this one. They also had a hand in Double Switch. So... <laughs> As you can see, a lot of things came out into fruition for this, and I gotta say, it's it's troubling to say the least. So, why was Night Trap attacked? Sega, you Nintendo used it as a platform to attack Sega and their and their graphics. That's the reason why the SRBs were were coming out there between the gra uh, the violence that happened at that time, or at least considered digital violence, to now hasn't changed. I mean, it's changed, but the people are. It's different. You know what I mean? It's not the same. You know what? Something tells me we should listen to Howard one more time. Howard, what would you think? Would you allow Night Trap to be produced on a Nintendo console? 
In the past year, some very violent and offensive games have reached the market. And of course, I'm speaking about Mortal Kombat and Night Trap. And let me say that for the record, I want to state that Night Trap will never appear on a Nintendo system. Obviously, it would not pass our guidelines. This game, which as you've indicate, indicated, promotes violence against women, simply has no place in our society. As you can see, guys, uh, it was hilarious. Um, now it took a long time to get to where it's got to be. And I got to say, it, it, it hurts to see a lot of things go on. And one of the things I wanted to, to, to stress to you is a lot of people, a lot of hard work goes into these games. We all know this. Back then, CGI and bad acting didn't really work out so well. <laughs> but... What I wanted to also show you was the actress who played uh, in Night Trap, was Dana Plato. A lot of you people know her from different strokes, um, at least the kids who were born in the 80s and 90s. She was part of different strokes and that kind of controversy back then when it came down to a lot of the African American roles and how that played out. And she was in there as well. She was in a lot of different movies and then sadly after the release of Night Trap about seven years later Dana um, had passed away and, but that was because of a lot of a long history with her but she was uh, known for that role and of course in Night Trap she was more detrimental in there so it was nice to see her in her full, full glory now I promised you guys a a uh, unboxing so let's get to let's get to it all right everyone so Night Trap was really famous, so it looks like our favorite production, Limited Run Games, they went ahead and started reproducing Night Trap again. And they did a great job. They released it with the PS4 and PC at one point, and they had collector's edition of that. So, what's in this box? Well, it's Night Trap for Nintendo Switch. Sorry, Lincoln. It happened. So let's take a look. Let's see what let's see what we got, right? So unfortunately this box is big, so I'm gonna take it off and pull it out. They did a great job wrapping this. Uh, so they give you a card for every one of them. By the way, I have a whole complete set, so for them to give me this card, that's fine, but I bought the complete set of Night Trap cards. So. And this is the funniest of it all. Tell me again, uh, uh, Harwood, that it will never appear on a Nintendo console. <laughs> uh, we're going to ask Tom and see what he thinks later on. Tom Kalinske. But um, either way, let's take a look here. So I don't want to rip this because I want to be able to put it back. But they did a great job of wrapping this up so nicely, too. Okay. This is the collector's version of Night Trap, guys. So I had to pick it up, which is great because I'm going to be taking it with me, not the collector's edition, but the game, um, with me to BlizzCon. I need something to take with me. But, uh... That's what it looks like in the back of it. The next generation of video game on console. Okay. Night, uh, they're rubbing in there, uh, limited run. But okay, we'll go with that. Uh, we're going to open it up. This is fantastic. They did a great job with this. Let's take a look here. So here's the game for uh, the, the Nintendo Switch, the actual physical game for Night Trap, which is great. And player connects the TV, all that good stuff. That's fine. This is the steel case. So this is like the carrying case. If you don't want to carry it with the game, you can go ahead and carry it with this. It's really nice. Really, really nice. Sorry for the the um, 
focusing. It's just the camera's doing it. So came out really nice, and it feels good too, guys. It's really pretty. There you go. Has the pictures of the characters inside. So that's one. Let's put this back in here because I'm probably not going to use this at all. Because metal cases, let's face facts, guys, they do get damaged a lot. So we're not going to use it for that, which is sad. All right. So the next thing I want to show you guys is this. This is a VHS tape. Now, why is that? It's kind of like um, Limited Run's uh, joke about all 80s, 90s, stuff like that, you know, VHS. Inside is all the cutscenes. So, you know, when you play Night Trap, there's a, it's a okay, corny story, but you miss a lot of it because you're trying to capture the bad guys in it. So, yeah, <laughs> that's why this is brought up to fruition. So you're going to see. So see, for the first time ever, the cult classic game Night Trap is available as a 48-minute motion picture on video cassette. <laughs> Experience the terror like never before. You better be good. You better beware Night Trap. That's fantastic. So. Now. The Sega CD, as you can see, compared to this, uh, I put it together. It really is one-to-one -one for the Sega CD. So Limited Run made their own version of the Sega CD style of Night Trap. So it's literally one-to-one. -one for I, I thought that was freaking awesome for what they did. Let's take a look. And they, of course, they give us a poster that goes with it. So let's take a look inside. So, there's the manual for the game. They actually came out with a manual for it, which is hilarious. And then this is the pocket for the game itself. And, of course, if you have the CD, you could put the CD in here. Which I'm probably going to wind up doing. I may, I'm probably going to wind up doing it because it's a lot better than keeping it the way I have mine. I have a, a, a reproduction case, and it really isn't that good. So, I'm probably going to put it in here. And that's what it looks like. Which is scat. By the way, a lot of people think it's funny, but scat meant Sega Control, Sega Control Attack Team or Attack, yeah, Sega Control Attack Team. A lot of people just like, oh, scat, ha 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 ha. No, it meant Sega Control Attack Team, but they cut that out to put in for that. So yeah, goes from there. So that's it, guys. This is the um, total unboxing of Night Trap. I mean. Like I said to you guys before, it really they really did a fantastic job with this. So, I got some closing remarks, guys, so I'll be right back. I'm going to switch to my... my uh... Hey, everybody, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, so, <laughs> I guess Howard didn't really get his way at the end. Well, Nintendo, actually. But it's not the first time Nintendo flexed their muscles around. This is like maybe the hundredth time. <laughs> But it was phenomenal. And by the way, just to let you guys know, Limited Run um, is a great way of getting different games. I heard they're making Double Switch, which is the game... Uh, I'm trying to find it again so you guys can see it. Oh, there it is. So they're making Double Switch, uh, which is also a great game. Um, they're going to be making that as a Limited Run game, which I'll probably be picking up as well. But overall, the ESRB came out no matter what. Was did it affect Sega sales? Not really. I mean, eventually, uh, Sega got out of the gaming market completely. I mean, they're not in as far as console market, but they still make games. And as you know, Sonic appears in the games uh, for Nintendo and stuff like that. So that's kind of funny. Anyway, the Limited Run also has these games produced by Nintendo. So they had to send this over to Nintendo, and they had to make it for them to bring it back to their market. Nintendo had something to do with this. It's just funny on how it works, right? After the ESRB rating, <laughs> with everyone fighting at each other at the time, Nint uh, both Sega and Nintendo, Howard had something to say to Tom after the ratings. Let's find out.
<laughs> also, um, Tom Kalinske, years later, was asked uh, when they first announced uh, the Night Trap being produced for Nintendo Switch. He does have a, a Twitter, and sometimes he answers fans from Sega Genesis days, which we do appreciate, you know, Tom. By the way, we love you still, so don't forget us. Um, he did say something about it. If I can bring it up here, I'll show you. He says, what do you think of... One fan said, what do you think about Night Trap being on the Nintendo console? He goes, well, maybe not until we need an older audience, or until 2018. He was kind of right, um, to be honest with you. It's kind of like what the retro gaming is today. A retro gaming has got its boon, but it's not got its boon because of the younger younger crowd. It got its boon because of us, the 80s and 90s kids, the Generation X kids. These people that grew up around the console wars are now adults, are now more amenable to all this stuff. So keep that in mind, guys, when you play this. It just it takes time, but as time goes, and retro grows, then we got Night Trap. If you guys want to see a lot more other stuff about the console wars, there is a book out by Seth Rogen, I believe. I don't know if it's part of the actor, so please forgive me. I probably is, but uh, I'll pop it up in the comments below as well, and I'll show you a picture so you guys can see it. Also, there is Game Over, another great book, so you check it out too. There's a lot of history content if you guys are interested in that stuff. Either way, guys, thank you so much for watching. I do want to make one last thing. I may be streaming again on Saturday. I know I shouldn't be because I should be packing, but I'm going to stream on the Nintendo Switch. So I do invite you guys to watch. Uh, if you like my channel, thumbs up this video. Leave some comments down below. Uh, tell me what you think about the ESRB ratings or about Night Trap in the whole. Uh, what about Howard's comments regarding the, the console wars? And, of course, finally, Tom Kalinsky's comments today. Either way, guys, take care, and I'll see you guys next time in the vault. Your eyes open. This time, I. Right.